Hey, what's happening? Hey, man, how, how are you? Good, man. How you been? Great. No complaints. What time is it there? Six. A.M.? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, All yeah. right. Are you normally up at that hour? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we have a lot of cats, and the best way I just can describe them to you is they're fucking assholes. Yeah. <laughs> About four thirty, they're banging on doors and yep, you know, yeah, shit like that. So it's like whatever. I haven't had a cat in a while, but uh, when I did have one, I only had one, and and that was enough to just fuck your morning all up. Yep, as we as we say in this house, six cats, six kids. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but yeah, it's um a normal waking up time for me. Cool, cool, dude. All right, so two days to the live album. Yeah, yeah, and Look. you know all the previews that are out so far. It's yeah, if anyone's looking for some grand plan, if they're in the wrong place. It's just skid fucking row live. That's that's yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. straightforward. I've always wanted to do a live record yeah, for years. Uh, you know, the first record I ever owned was kiss alive. So, um, you know, still when I listen to it, it just has such a powerful effect on me. Yeah. So, uh, I've always been like, let's do a live record. Let's do a live record. But you know, just for one reason or another is, it's a lot to it. So that was a, uh, it was, a, it was good timing. Yeah. And uh, the perfect place to do it. You know, London's always been very good to us. Yep. Great venue, great crowd. Really, it's yeah. good. It was a good night. Well, that, that venue is 90 years old. So it, I actually went went on the, the Google and uh, there used to be a cinema that they made into a, a live venue. Oh, wow. So yeah. from a performer's aspect, is it one of those venues where it's, Almost spinal tappy with staircase after staircase after staircase. Oh yes, yeah. I think the the dressing room I think was on the fourth floor, um, and you know you walk in a little side door and it's like, and picture picture like narrow narrow short hallways, white brick painted, you yep. know, like glossy white brick, and then you go up and up, and you know this is a set of dressing rooms and up and up and another set of dressing rooms and then. You know, of course, our dressing room is usually all the way up the top and uh, and, uh, you know, up and down all afternoon. Yeah. But uh, I uh, I was telling somebody the other day right before and I think I post it's on my Instagram. There's a there's a picture of. Uh, that our merch guy took of me right before uh, literally like while our intro was rolling, I was about yep. to run out. And uh, just pumped, yeah. Yeah, it must, good. Be, must be difficult with all those staircases doing "Hello Cleveland" like seven times as you go that's, down. That's like every venue is like that to yeah. some extent, you know. And when you a lot of times, especially touring in the states or Europe, you know, you wake up on a bus and you don't know, you don't know where you are. And if you sleep late and you're the last person on the bus, you walk outside, and sometimes. There's a stage door right there. Sometimes you're parked a block away. You don't know where you are. Yeah. But now it's great because with our phones, you know, you can lay in your bunk and open up Google Maps and see exactly where you are. And, you know, all right, I need my coffee. Where can I get some coffee? Uh, you know, where's the cafe or whatever? Yep. Yeah. And, and they're everywhere now. That's the thing. Like, I, I could imagine. I remember your first tour here. So it's like 89. Um, yeah, and you know, the say the venue you played in Sydney, which is where I was living in the time, it's like a 15 20 minute drive in the bus from the hotel to the venue. And at that time in '89, there was fucking nothing around it, so you would have been either bussing it back to the hotel or just sitting there all day. Yeah, that's the worst. That's really that that'll mess your show up, man, because. If you're sitting there all day, it's uh, by the time it's showtime, you're numb. You really got to find a way to pull yourself in. And, you know, um, you know a lot of times if, if you're a drinker, which I used to be, 
that's a good way to pull yourself in. And then mm. you, can't, you can't do that night after night. But uh, that whole thing of showing up to a gig an hour, an hour and a half before and going in and, and getting your getting your psyche up to go yep. play is it's it's big for the show. It's big for my show or any anybody that plays on stage. Um, but, you know, what what I really miss is the whole electricity of going to a show as as a uh, as a spectator, you know, as part of the audience. Yeah. Uh, and I, 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 I don't go to a lot of shows, but in the past few years, I've gone to some shows and I just I love the parking lot, walking through the parking lot and yeah. seeing the bootleggers and coming through the front door and the anticipation and waiting for the house lights to go down. When you're backstage, you don't experience any of that. No, you're just in you're just in a brightly lit, brightly lit hallways. And it's, you know, a lot of times it's quiet back there. And so you don't really experience much of that at all. And so you got to bring yourself to that place. Yeah. And yeah. I know that from being in the photo pit, it's a different atmosphere. And then you, know, you, you go out to the crowd and you're doing the impress me after you've been yeah, in, the, yeah. in the photo yeah. pit. So like yeah, yeah, tonight we're going to our like one of our first shows in a while. We took a break and we're going to a massive stadium show, like Parkway Drive, our big Aussie metal band that are just taking the world by storm are, are back home doing two nights, fifteen thousand seater sold out. Fantastic. More That's more good. more pyro than our favorite band. Wow. So are you, uh, are you, are you, uh, uh, working? Are you, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm shooting and then hoping the wife doesn't need a chiropractor in the pit the next day. <laughs> Cause she, they're one of her favorite bands and she's going to show the youngins how it's done. Nice. Nice. That's yeah. great. So yeah, we, we, we do that tonight and then I take our nine year old to the same show on Friday. Wow. Cool. What, yeah, what band? They're called Parkway Drive. Parkway Drive. Okay. okay. So that then like they probably haven't broken in the States the way they should, mm-hmm. but, it, but in Europe, they like line up next to Slipknot in the way of the oh, bill. Wow. Yeah. Great. They've thrown That's their sick. own festivals in Europe. That's how big I'll they are. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little out of touch. You know, yeah. I, I, I'm in this small room. Yeah. I, I think you'd appreciate them because you know how a lot of metal bands today, it's about the metal, mm-hmm. and not about the construction and the the song craft. These right. guys can write a good fucking song. Oh, good. Yeah. You know, like that they will blow shit up Ramstein style, but then have violinists on stage. Okay. Yeah. Right. I think you'd really appreciate, especially the guitar players. They it's not just all drop D, it's melody lines, it's hooks. Good. So good. At, com- coming from the the band that's you know had more hooks than a fucking fishing shop, so a couple, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's uh, you know, you gotta have the riffs, you gotta have the hooks, you gotta have all that good stuff, and um, and I find myself searching for something that makes me excited, something yeah. that makes me feel good. I I recently got asked by a major magazine; they send out like uh, you know, what's your favorite this and that of 2024 and i was like i was like you know i'm gonna skip it this year because i there's nothing out there that i really am interested in and and that's the funny part about it is like i haven't found anything for this year yet um Mm -hmm. you know two three years ago there was two standout albums for me one was the gang's all here because it was just the comeback of comebacks and the extreme album right yeah yeah you know and all the oldies are making a comeback yeah and i think about the fact that like this live album a lot of people could just rest on it but you've got three songs from the new album on there which is great yeah yeah it it you know the album i'm just happy to have a live album out yes very cool yeah um i mean i can remember talking about it in the early days in the, in the, you know, in the early nineties, I can remember being like, boy, we should do a live record, you know? So, um, but like I said, it's, it's, there's a lot involved. And, and the thing is, it's like, all right, we're going to bring in this truck. 
We're going to set up all this recording equipment. Yeah. Let's hope this is the show. Yeah. Because you can go see a band every night and see pretty much the same show, but it's not, you know, it's yeah. there. Some shows are really have that magic. And some yeah. shows, you know, we walk away some nights going, man, we suck tonight and we'll be fucking pissed off and, and all that stuff. But um, so you don't want to bring out the and, and you really have no control over that. You always go yeah. out trying to do your absolute best. Um, and then, you know, there's the pressures of like, OK, because, I, you know, we like to perform, but in order to perform, you have to sacrifice some playing. So you have to find that balance between putting on a show, how much you're going to move yeah. um, and, and how much you're going to concentrate on, you know, yeah. playing well, not playing in front of the beat and missing, you know, missing notes or, or whatever, which happens, which always happens. And, and the thing is, after seeing you guys live a bit, once you put that boiler suit on, you're a different person. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 like a it's like that kiss like transformation kind of thing of, it's yeah something uh something happens when I go out there I yeah. feel I, I feel much more powerful and and strong than I yeah than I am down here you know do, I call do you it up there and down here you know do you feel that it's harder for bands to record live albums now purely because there's things recording in every single row of that venue when you're on like with phones. Well, you know, I mean, you're not going to get that. You're not going to get that quality. You're not going to get a mixed product from yeah. your phone. You're going to get you're going to get the the sound from that particular spot in the venue. And, you know, when you're in a band and you're on stage, you always see some guy out there going, I can't hear the guitar or I can't hear the vocal. You know, well, you, there's the way sound works is. If you're standing in the center of the room and you're mixing a band, that's where you can hear everything. Yeah. So, um, you know, I don't need to explain this to you, but you know, the, the layman doesn't understand that, you know, if you're down in front of the, the subwoofers, you, yeah. you're certainly not going to hear the, uh, the vocalists. No. You know, so you got, you got, uh, you know, you got a thousand people mixing from the audience. You know? Yeah. More vocals can't hear the guitar oh there's a couple of bands i'm going to leave them unnamed that now bring ipads out on stage and mix their innies on stage which they, they, they don't realize that affects how the front of house guy is trying to compensate for them playing with the mix on stage and it's just it looks like some sort of uh, ipad dj non-stop on stage <laughs> and it's like dude what? leave it alone we will we'll do our monitor mixes uh, ourselves on our phone sometimes, yeah. but you know, they, what he's got and what we got are, are they're completely different things. But um, computers on stage have become a thing. Yeah, I can't I can't stand it. I can't stand seeing an iPad sitting there like, and a guy like trying to engage with the crowd. We're going, wait a minute. He's got his hand on the neck, and his hand like on the iPad. Oh no! Changing the mix yeah. as he goes. That, that stuff should never be in view. You know, you're, yeah. unless unless you're the DJ, unless the band's got a you know a guy doing this, yeah stuff. Unless you're Limp Biscuit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, no, no, no. Uh, that stuff should be, if it's there, it should be out of view. Yeah. So it when it comes to the album, I've gone through the track. So six songs off the debut. Six songs off Slave, three mm -hmm. songs off the new, and Psychotherapy, which is the you know the live staple. Now, yep. did you ever think back in '88, you know, almost 40 years later, that yeah. six songs off that debut album would just be live staples? I, I didn't think we'd be sitting here talking about any of this. Yeah, any of it. I didn't. I, you know when we became successful, I was shocked. Yeah. I mean, I, not, be, not because I thought that we weren't a good band. I was just like, wow, this can really happen. Yeah. So the fact that we're talking about this all these years later, um, you know, every day I go on Instagram and somebody's tagged me with, with, you know, one of my solos that they've learned and 
they posted it and I'm like, I can't even believe this. You know, I just walked in that room however many years ago, 36, 37 years ago and, and played something and somebody that wasn't even born yet is yeah. throwing it back at me. I'm like, wow, that's, it's incredible. You know, yeah. it doesn't get lost on me. None of that shit gets lost on me. So yeah, that, that first record, man, it had a lot of impact. Yeah. And I remember I read or listened to an interview with Michael Wagner who did the first album and he said the funniest part about it at the time was management was so worried about the band getting into trouble. They took them out in the middle of nowhere to record the album and didn't yeah. think about the fact it was spring break. Yeah. Yeah. They put it, they put us out. They thought they were being clever and they put us out in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, which is a small town in the middle of Wisconsin It's about two hours from Chicago and about an hour and a half from Milwaukee far enough that, you know, we, between all of us, we had a, a rental van that we, that we just used. And, but it was spring break and it was a lake with lots of bars. And uh, they also didn't realize that Alpine Valley was about 15 minutes away. Now Alpine Valley was a, I'm not sure. I think it's still there. Um, an outdoor concert venue. Yeah. And that's some, everybody came through that summer yeah you know, judas priest uh um aerosmith uh def leppard and and more that i probably don't remember and all those bands stayed on the property we were staying on right the studio was located in the uh convention center of a, a large hotel resort which coincidentally our management also put us at a place where they could play golf of course you know? yeah so there was two golf courses on the property also so you know that was that was and uh that was not a coincidence oh. so they were coming out and playing golf and figured we'd be locked up out there but in the meantime we were taking that van off-roading and going into town and going to concerts and doing all the stuff that they were really trying to keep us away from. And then for Slave to the Grind, you know, the band had a little more say in things, yeah. which you get when you make money for people. And uh, so we we're like, we're, we're going to Fort Lauderdale to make our record in, I think it was January or February. So, yep. you know, we, we live in the Northeast of the United States where yeah. it's cold and it's snowing. And Fort Lauderdale, you know, they call it Fort Liquordale. Yep. So... <laughs> wow man so it's, it's amazing we got the record done it really is because yeah that's that that's that's the sound of a hangover is what that is it's a heavy you know? fucking hangover <laughs> yeah yeah for sure and then we came to la and mixed it here uh yeah. so you know between fort lauderdale and los angeles we were and you know having more of a budget so yeah. where the first record we had a minivan and then then the second record we all rented these these hopped up mustangs and we're driving all around la you know burning rubber yeah. and, and doing burnouts and shit so i think speaking of the first album i think the one thing that was great not on the lot on the tour you did with eric but on the tour you did with zp here they mm -hmm. busted out the uh scotty hill song forever which was oh yeah you know, yeah much much of the people in the crowd i think they were very shocked to hear that song and it's it's good that that song sort of had its rebirth so to speak do yeah, you remember bringing yeah. that to the guys it was recorded for the first record yeah. and i don't remember exactly why but it was rejected um i think i think somebody said it was too poppy i'm like all right well i can think of a one or two other songs on there that are also too poppy but i'm just one guy so uh yeah but everybody always liked the song in the band the band always liked the song um and I don't remember exactly why it was that we wound up doing that. Um, but it did, it was released on uh, the best uh, of, yeah. uh, and so, yeah, but we do, we broke that out and we played it down there for you guys, yeah. Australia. And that was fun. Really fun. I did, it, you know, it's a fun riff. It's a fun yeah. riff. I, uh, it was, uh, it was just a, a right hand exercise, I guess, that turned into a riff. That's how a lot of riffs happen. 
Well, the, the one the one riff or part that's been a favourite of mine, and I'd love to see the band busted out when they go back out on the road, is New Generation. We were talking about that recently. We were yep. talking about uh, breaking that out at some point because that's a uh, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that and thick as the skin was was fun to play. Also, yeah, and for for a couple of years there. Um, in the early two thousands, we were we were doing yeah. those every day. Uh, well, yeah, that you know that album "Thick Skin" is is really cool. It's so good. And I remember the last time I spoke to Snake, he was like, "We're going to get Eric to re-record a couple of songs." Did it ever happen? Nope. No. Nope. Nope. He's no. he's always wanted to re-record Ghost. He told me, and he just I was like, "Oh yeah, let's do it." We never had a chance. We never yeah. had a chance. We didn't really. Uh, we didn't get a chance to get into the studio. Yeah. So that whole thing ran its course and, you know, Eric just wasn't feeling good about yeah. how, it, how it was affecting him. So we never had a chance to get in and do any of that, but um, somehow I think some of that stuff's going to see the light of day at some point. Yeah. Well, I think, I think about the fact of we saw it happen in front of our eyes right here in Brisbane, you know, one day he was fine. The next he wasn't. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, for, for all the people that go, oh, they cancelled a show, they cancelled a show, and, you know, there's always the ticket sales. I've said it to people a lot. I was there. I was back yeah. there with you guys. It was a sold-out crowd, like, yeah. in the in the lobby, waiting to yep. come in, and everybody did everything they could to help Eric, including Eric, and it just wasn't yeah. meant to be. It was hard. It was really hard. It was uh, It was very hard on him. I know that. Yeah. I mean, that's not a good position to be in, and and it affected him. And yeah. then uh, the following night, we came out and played in yeah. Sydney. Yep. Yeah. And we couldn't finish the show. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, we did the best we could, and yeah. he did the best he could. He did the best he could. So uh, it, it's unfortunate. He's a great singer. So, yeah. but uh, and touring like may may not be his body may not be ready for the skid, the skid row style of touring. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, you're a working man. You're just getting warmed up. So yeah. it's like, come on, let's go. Now I understand. I understand. It's very hard. It's very hard. I was really sorry to see him go. When we communicated last, you said that you were possibly bringing a pro tools rig out to record the Lizzie shows. Did it happen? I'm not sure if it happened or not. Um, I don't think so, but our sound guy, he does occasionally record stuff. I don't know if he had his rig with him or not, but that's a good question. Because like, you know, I'd love to see, even if it was just like a little bonus thing, like, you know, song of the month with Lizzie, go on like your site. Oh, man, it'd be great because that, those shows were, incredible they were so much fun and yeah. it was four shows i think yeah look I, I got to spend my birthday doing one of those shows really really cool yeah. she's a powerhouse and just the most awesome person and um being on stage with her her, her energy is just wow yeah really powerful energy and she just yeah. and she was pumped man she loved it she, we all had such a great time yeah and you guys and Joe, have... Joe was there. Joe came out yeah. and played a song. Yeah. And and was your uh, living photographer too, which was great to get some different perspective. You know, because him being in a band and taking photos, he sees yeah. it from a different angle. He does. He does. Yeah. Yep. And he was always he always had a camera hanging off of him. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now you guys have talked about the potential of having more guests appearances mm -hmm. is there someone for you where you go i would love to have them come out and sing well we've got some names in the hat that we're actually speaking to so yep. um but i can't announce anything yet um but that whole idea is really cool um and that all came about by by mistake well not you know accidentally yeah uh, so uh i mean a wish list yeah i mean it wouldn't you know it's some of them aren't realistic and we've named some people that that would probably love to do it but can't 
do it because of the because their style it just doesn't match or maybe they don't have the range that's the whole thing is the range yeah uh, of those those vocals they're they're oh. very hard they're very hard to sing i'll throw one in and it's Corey taylor yeah i know well see that's a name that came up but yeah. uh i don't know if he's gonna be yeah. gonna be able to and he's you know he's a good friend of rachel's they're yeah. they're the guys are tight um yeah that that would have been that the, would be really the other one who would sound interesting but i think you guys would have to probably maybe drop down or i don't know how to work would be a guy that was gonna be a singer originally in the band that was karabi Karabi, yeah, I, I I believe his name was brought up also, yeah. And, you know, we could tune down. You know, when, when Johnny was in the band, we tuned down a half step. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't tune down any more than a half step. Yeah. Because then you, you can hear it. You can, yeah. I mean, I can hear when a band is tuned down a half step, I can I can totally hear it. Um, I don't, I don't not like it. I don't disagree with it, but I can hear it. So, yeah, I now, think the stuff sound as close to original as it can as far as tempos and pitch and it's hard for you guys because you're always going to have the the get this singer get that singer get your original singer and matt fallon's not singing anymore people are, so they <laughs> can't get their original singer drop, <laughs> drop the original singer thing because i haven't heard from matt fallon have yeah, you heard from him I, I always hit them with that it's like they go get back with your original singer. I'm like, I don't even have Matt Fallon's number. So <laughs> yeah, uh, I love, I love that online comeback from people that are in the know. It's just like, why, why do they want Matt Fallon back? Like they replaced him. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now people will never stop with that stuff. Yeah. So, you know, I understand why. So whatever. That's the funny fine. part is I, you're in the band and I'm a fan and I don't understand why it's kind of like, okay, there's been Skid Row have been around longer without him than with him. Yeah. And whether you think Skid Row are successful or not without him, it's not based on album sales. It's based on longevity. You guys have pretty much toured nonstop since 1988. So yeah. as far as I'm concerned, as a spectator, the band are fine. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, you know, like I say, I understand why, why people, want that but yeah. it wouldn't be how they remembered it it wouldn't be what they expected they would be disappointed we would be unhappy you know we just saw what happens when you try to do something like that and yes. and we're talking about you know jane's addiction yeah that's and it's terrible what happened to those guys it's just, i feel terrible for them but um you know like some reunions maybe shouldn't happen well, I don't know. They were out um, here earlier this year, I think it was, but with Josh from the Chili's on guitar. Mm -hmm. And you could even tell without Navarro and Perry near each other that it just, it's not meant to be. Yeah. yeah. It's not meant to be. And, and there's, and there's a lot on the line, you know, like though the, their whole crew, the, I mean, those guys, boom, just like that. Yep. Okay, you got to work. That's that's affecting a good amount of people and affecting their families. It affects the band, the the people that put tours together. You, the, the average fan doesn't understand how many parts, movie parts, yeah, movie parts there are to make this thing happen. So just our tour in Australia that we yep. had to. I mean, that was that was being planned for a year. And yeah. then boom, just like that. So um yeah, it's it sucks what happened with that whole thing. But you know, I, I hope everybody comes through it yeah healthy and and back on their feet. Because that's you know, when I saw that go down, I could relate to it on many different ways. Yeah. Many different ways. So I've been on both sides of that coin. Yeah, yeah. Did you think to yourself, no, I would have led with my left, not my right? <laughs> it wouldn't have been a shoulder. <laughs> um, I want to go back a bit and wonder, this is something I've been wondering for a long time. So you and Rachel first met in a band called Godsend. 
Yeah. Did God send put anything down on tape that's in yeah. the archives? We have we have demos. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. We have a, 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 uh, we were we're in the studio a few times, um, and I it's on cassette, so I would have to figure out how to get it digitized. Yeah. Which which is easy enough to do. It's just a matter of, you know, <laughs> going outside and getting in the car, uh, yeah. dropping it off somewhere. But uh, I'd have to find them first. But I do have them. Rachel has them. Um, and, you know, it was it was fun stuff. It was, what could I compare it to? It was like a, it's a cross between Queensryche and Iron Maiden, I guess. It was, okay. you know, some of the songs were longer with more parts and, you know, as a guitar player, there was lots of room for playing. I was the only guitar player in the band, so I was doing a lot. Um, yeah, it was fun. Was that was really difficult fun. when then it became a two guitar band for you and Snake to decide? I, I, now you guys are like that, but back then was yeah. there a push and pull? I'd never been in a two guitar band before. Um, yeah. And I wanted to be in the band. I wanted to be in Skid Row brand new band my really close friend was in the band i love their music i thought i was very excited about it i yeah. wanted to be in the band. and when they brought me in i was like i'll play rhythm man I'm, I'm cool with that snake's like no way you're just playing rhythm no way i was like all right cool um and it was it it wasn't there wasn't there was it was seamless it was a seamless transition for me no. um it was it was a new challenge because uh i i learned from snake he's like let's not play the same thing let's let's do counterpoints and then we'll play the same thing so you know you get a big guitar you know all around and then and then everything goes whoosh, 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 yeah. whoosh, whoosh. you know you got the the guitars talking back and forth to each other and that was a that was a learning experience. We would sit down and listen to examples of it. The first example that he played me was Last Child, like the word where Last Child opens up. And I was like, yeah, all right. I never even thought of that, you know, because yep. I'm listening to Randy Rhodes and Eddie Van Allen, you know, and they're just the guy. There's yep. not, you know, and, and he was listening to Maiden and Priest, where there's two guys. Um not that he wasn't listening to those other guys, but he had always been in a two guitar band and I yeah. had always been one guitar band. Um, and there was, ne it was never an issue of who's going to play what, who gets to play more. It was always like, let's split it up equally. And it's, it's never been, never been any tension. Snake and I have had a lot of tension over the years, but none of it been over guitar player, yeah. <laughs> the guitar playing. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but but when you're in a band, it's over this long. It's it's a brotherhood, and yep. and you you always mixing it up over something. We love each other, the the three of us, and and Rob included, the four of us. We we really do love each other. We're brothers. Um, but uh, never is the guitar playing thing has always been uh, mutual respect. Uh, we've rubbed off on each other. I can hear his my style and him, and his style and me. Um, they've they've gotten closer. And uh, I couldn't think of a, a guitar player I'd rather work with. It's, it's been great, really, just the best. And then we fast forward to another lost lot of songs, which is Ozone Monday. Ozone now, Monday, yeah. A, lot of, a few of those have seen a lot of day, and I've got to say, for the time, they're perfect. They're perfect for when they came out. They're a great representation of the time. I'd love to see all of those get released. Has it ever been talked? uh you know we've never we haven't talked about it in years um and it's really good stuff i mean yes. i thought i think those songs are strong really strong um and uh we work with uh, a singer by the name of sean mccabe on that and sean is a great songwriter and a great singer he's got like a nice velvety voice really cool um and those songs were just really really good yeah. Um, well, you've got a great songwriting team with Rachel and Snake. You throw Sean into the mix, and that worked really well. And you know, a lot of the stuff I write is is not so much heavy stuff. I think I probably wrote a lot more of that than. Well, I definitely wrote a lot more of that than than Skid Row. Um, 
so you, it was a really nice mix of of everybody yeah well one of the songs ended up on thick skin yeah yeah, yeah born a beggar yeah yep. which is that was, that was me and sean sean yeah. and i wrote it together um it's about a dog yep yeah. and so yeah. but you you hear the ozone monday version and you go makes sense that it ended up on a skid row album yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a cool song like um uh, how much archival stuff have you guys got? Like, is is, the, is there one person, like, I, I'd hate to say trust it to Snake, give it to someone else <laughs> to hold on to, but, like, is there someone well, holding I, on to everything? During the Ozone Monday days, the, the studio was at Snake's house. Um, mm -hmm. He had a pretty big house in New Jersey, and he was just buying gear like crazy and, and working on that studio. So for a couple of years, we just worked out of there. And I mean, that was a proper studio. I mean, Joey Kramer came in there and did a record in Snake's yeah. basement with a band. Um, and uh, so he's probably got that stuff. Um, Rachel's really good at organizing that stuff and, and keeping it safe. And he's very organized with that and, and responsible. Right. Um, the king like, unlike the rest of us. So, yeah. um, <laughs> uh, so I don't, I don't know where the masters are, but I'm sure they're safe somewhere. Yeah. That's like I said, that ozone Monday stuff was really good. It was really good. And, yeah. and nobody, nobody wanted to hear it. The funny part about it is like, I remember you guys went out and did the psycho circus tour with, yeah, you did some dates and, you know, right. yeah. I and, forgot about it. Yeah. 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 You've done a lot of touring with Kiss, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's come to think of it. Yeah, in 2000, we did 140 shows with yeah, Kiss. With, with Snake on a stool for part of it. I know. <laughs> that guy's got more hardware in his in his leg than, than uh, you know, Dome Depot, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was in Vegas. What's going to happen? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what happens in Vegas stays with him the rest of his life. In, in, instead of him getting into trouble in Vegas, it got caused by someone else's trouble. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Right. Now, there's the. Uh, I've got to ask about subhuman race. Yeah. I, sure. It's it's a polarizing album in terms of for the band and for the mm -hmm. fans. And you know, I've heard Snake say, you know, he thinks there's great stuff on it. But the production, I've heard Rachel say the same. What's Scotty's take on subhuman race? Well, there was my take on it when we did it and when we released it and my take on it now. So it came up recently on a playlist. Something came up and I was like, oh, that sounds pretty good. But I haven't listened to it. And I usually never listen to this stuff after we're done recording it. Yeah. I'll hear it. I'll hear it at a party or at a club or whatever. But um, when we were doing that record, the band was falling apart. We were unprepared. Um, we were not getting along. Uh, it was it was not fun. Uh, we did we worked with Bob Rock, who's a great producer, but but did not really didn't vibe with with Skid Row uh or what what we felt like we were about but at that moment we didn't know what we were about you know i mean he made that record to happen because <clears throat> when we got on a plane to go to vancouver we were not prepared to do a record so sure. we set up the studio we were not prepared to do a record so he pulled that all together but the whole experience was very dark you know it was it was a dark time of year it was we were up in the cold weather, it was raining and everybody was unhappy and it was just the whole memory of it is kind of dark. So I think that is overpowers the overall product for yeah. the guys that made the record. I can only speak for myself, but that's how I feel about it. It was just going through such a, and I don't even think at the time we really, well, to some extent we realized that we were unhappy. We had been unhappy for a long time, but uh, looking back now, it was like, wow, it's, it's amazing we got anything done. The, yeah. experience, the experience of making that record ruined it for me. Right. That's why when I occasionally hear something from it now, I'll be like, no, oh, 
that's that sounds pretty good you know uh i hear the other guys complain about the sound of it it doesn't sound like the first two records it definitely sounds different um but that's not to say it sounds bad i don't i don't think it sounds bad it just doesn't yeah. sound for for a, list, a listener to me, it sounds like Bob Rock was already producing the next album he was going to work on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he just he, it, uh, I don't know. He just didn't seem in from a listener standpoint. Didn't sound like he wanted to be there. No, well, from a from a guy standpoint, in in the studio, it felt like he didn't want to be there. Yeah, he was doing a favor for somebody else. He didn't want to do that record. Right. That's that's, that's my opinion. And there's, um, there's two albums from that time frame that I wish could be remixed. One, Subhuman Race, and one is actually Kisses, Carnivore Souls. Oh, all right. Because you know, yeah. I, I love the songs on that, but the production yeah. sounds like someone's been drowned underwater. Well, he was, I believe that he was going for what he thought was current. Uh, you know, and, and when, you know, you can take a step further and go to Saint Anger, and then, and then the de degraded sound of that. Yeah. That, that was that was the development of that whole thing. Everybody was using super compressed trash can snares, and, yeah. and you can hear that on Subhuman Race. And that was a matter of listening to the radio and saying, "Oh, this is what's happening." And and that is, I I want nothing to do with what's happening. Yeah, I, I, I want only to do with what's happening here. Yeah, what's happening out there. If you go, if you're going for that, you're going to be six months behind everything. Yeah. Now, the, I'd the rather band, be thirty years behind everything. <laughs> I always say to my wife, "I'm perpetually last year's model." Yeah. <laughs> nice. And I'm I'm stoked with that. I'm fine with that. I don't need all the bells and whistles. I just need shit to do what it's meant to do. The rest yeah, of it's man. up to me. I like it. Yeah. It's like when you pick up a guitar, you should be able to pick up a guitar. And it doesn't matter if it's a 2014 model or a 1955, it's the fingers that play the guitar, not the guitar yeah. that plays the guitar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, people say this guitar sounds great. How does it sound right now? Yeah, exactly right. I quote Chet Atkins. Well done. Now, the, the live album... There's all there is like literally three albums represented and and one song from the covers record. Um, when you were out with Eric, was it a big decision to sort of go? We're going to stay away from Thick Skin and from the Revolutions albums, or it just happened naturally? No, there's uh, <clears throat> no. We just we just went with what we thought people wanted to hear. Yeah, uh, and and of course what we wanted to play. Uh, that's always got a, that's always a big factor. If there's something we don't like to play, we don't play it. Yeah. Uh, so, but you know, the, what we're going to play, it's, it's never really, you know, it's not, it's nothing that we bicker over or anything like that. We keep it pretty close to what we've been playing, which is proven, which is what people want to hear. There's always people, people are always asking, how come you nothing from subhuman race? We haven't done anything off of subhuman race in a long time. Um, yeah. <clears throat> we just don't get excited about it. It doesn't, it's like, eh. yeah. I mean, we should, we should represent it. It'd be great if we could represent it, but, uh, and, and I'm not saying we won't, <clears throat> we've done beat yourself blind on and off for, for decades. Um, yeah. I would have to go back and revisit that record and, and, and re-listen to it and see what, what would be worth playing um i like the idea of just picking something out of a hat something obscure and playing it and seeing if anybody recognizes it as an old song or a new song yeah uh, and the thing is like you guys did beat yourself blind with both johnny and zp and it's not no slot on any of them but johnny owned it and i think johnny, johnny did it really well yeah it was lost on zp i don't think his his vocal style meshed with that so it's a certain kind of sound yeah. that pulls it off Definitely, definitely. I mean, that's that's like that's some screaming going on there. It's not yeah. high screams. It's no. not high, you know, vocalizing. It's just it's attitude. It's got a lot of attitude. <clears throat> Johnny was good. He yeah. did that really well. Now let's talk about the other side of Scotty Hill. So behind you, I can see a board with wires and all kinds of shit coming out of it. 
So for people that don't know, you make pedals. That's a, that's a, 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 it's an overdrive circuit. I'm working on an overdrive pedal. Yes, I start during the, uh, during the pandemic, I, uh, I bought a kit to build a pedal. And I bought a cheap soldering iron and, um, and then I bought another kit and a few more. And then I bought it just a, I bought just a printed circuit board. And then I, uh, I ordered all the parts and did it from there. And then I started making circuits and you know, now I, uh, let's see. so these are, these are work in progress here. This is, this is the, this is that in a, printed circuit board version right, so yeah. i learned the software to you know make this and i send the files out and come back and then i solder everything to it that's where the switch is going to go and then when it's done it'll this is a this is one of the prototypes but uh yep it's not it's not painted or anything but this is the finished version of that <clears throat> and that's the prototype so uh that's my uh that's my overdrive circuit and i did a bunch of fuzz boxes this is a this is a fuzz face you see the nice purple paint on there yep. i like to paint them up it's a lot of work um you know i stamped the serial numbers on there and all that stuff and i signed the inside and um it's fun i like it i is like it, it just going to be like a little small boutique thing for you or do you, do you foresee it being something else well if i can make a million dollars from it i'd love it but uh if if i can enjoy doing it i love that too you know uh it's i i love the whole process of it um you know all the different you know i mean to get the holes straight on one of those enclosures so it looks professional and all that's this it's a whole thing man you know it's like it's, it's, it's a lot that goes into it. Um, just sourcing parts and all that stuff. So it, I just enjoy doing it and, and I I've sold some of them. Uh, the batches will get bigger now that I'm on printed circuit boards. Um, and a lot of people are asking for them. So I think I'm happy to provide if, if they can wait. Yeah. So now, now I've got to ask. Yeah. You've toured a lot with Kiss. Yeah. So we go, you know, it was originally going to be in 1996 for one date you were offered, but we won't go there. And then you did, <laughs> then you did um, Saga Circus, you did the farewell and you did the farewell, farewell. Yeah. Yeah. So for you, what's your greatest Kiss related story? Seeing Gene Simmons walk out of the dress room, fully dressed and walk up to my son and put his elbow on his head so I could snap a picture of it. That moment was, was really awesome. And Paul, Paul did almost the same thing. Um, Paul was, Paul came out and was, I said, hello briefly. And he looked at Marshall. He says, how are you doing? Marshall says, good. And he goes, come here. Cause he knew. He yeah. Knew that we'd want to and he you know pulled a little more laid back but yeah. uh those guys are great with the kids man yeah. really great but uh i remember in 2000 as i mentioned before we did 140 shows right yeah. and the last show you know we'd go out and watch almost every night we'd go out and watch the show because it was great and um the last show i'm watching rock and roll all night i'm 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 at the verge of tears. I'm like, oh my God, I'm, this is it. It's the last time this is ever going to happen. There's confetti and it's like, it's like, oh my God. Yeah. And I, uh, when it was over, I walked out the front door of the venue and walked to the hotel like a mile away. Just like, wow, what an experience. And then there we are, like 25 yeah. years later, doing it again. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, I'm, I, just, I, I shot the very, very last Australian show, but, well, uh -huh. bo okay. but both versions of it. So they did both the, versions. <laughs> they, they did the uh, one in like 2018. It was like, it's the last one. It's the last one. When it, I forget when it, no, it was 2022. And I was like, no, it's not. 
They've got one more in them. There's one more. Yeah. They've yeah. already been talking about it. Yep. So we well, went, we, yeah, we went down to Sydney to do it. And I was like, I've got to shoot this show. And as you know, you've seen it now. They have the fans that can pay to be in the photo pit. Yeah. yeah. And I looked at Keith, their guy that runs it all. I said, man, this is the last time I'm shooting this band. you got to get them out of my way. Because when that scrim drops, I'm running. Yeah. And he goes, yeah. it'll be fine. It'll be fine. And I had my wife put her phone on. And scrim went down. They stood still. And I just, they were like dominoes. As I ran past to shoot. <laughs> I was like, you paid to be here, but i got shit to do. You got to get it. Got to yep. get it. Man. That's the gig. It's, uh, you know, Kiss is, is uh, uh, something that's just been such a huge part of so many bands. And for us, um, in 1977, uh, it was, I believe it was 77 or 78. Uh, I saw Kiss at Nassau Coliseum. And during that week, Snake saw Kiss at Madison Square Garden and Rachel saw Kiss at the Philadelphia Spectrum. All these venues are within like 100 miles of each other. They're all like, it's like three consecutive shows. We were all at those shows. We're all the same age. And then here we are all these years later talking about Kiss, touring with Kiss, rubbing elbows with Kiss. Yeah, yeah, really, really great, yeah. really. And, and it's just so many great memories. You know, I got to see him at the Hollywood Bowl, uh, one of, you know, close to the end of the last tour. And, and that was a, a cool experience because I'd seen them outdoors a bunch of times and played with them outdoors. But that was really cool because another venue that's so famous. Yeah. Yeah, I had the opportunity to go to one show at the Hollywood Bowl when I was out last, and believe it or not, it was System of a Down and played the Hollywood Bowl. Oh, wow. And I was yeah, like, that... oh, I'm not really into System of a Down. I kind of wish I'd gone just because it's the Hollywood Bowl. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah it's, yeah, it's more about what's the venue than the show kind of thing. Yeah. 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 No, for me, it was 1980 was the first time I saw Kiss. So we were at Carr. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. A few years after you, but like... It's the show that they filmed and they got released and all that. But I yeah. think about it now and I go, you know, yeah, you'll walk into Gene and he'll do the, oh, it's, it's a pleasure for you to meet me kind of thing, you know. Uh, yeah. And there's that connection and, yeah. And as my wife says, she hates it because before she met me, she didn't really think about how Kiss have now moved into everyone's psyche, either in movies or in TV. And yeah. something will come up. It'll be just like a poster in the back scene of a tv show and she'll just look and go Fuck, everything revolves around kiss everything revolves around kiss yeah i remember once uh in on the 2000 tour uh you know people that don't aren't kiss people they don't understand right and you probably me like many of us was ridiculed in high school for like and kiss and uh you know the jocks yeah. hated kiss and all that and my sister brought a friend to one of the shows. My sister, I was, she was, it's like Virginia Beach or something. She's got a place down there and she, she brought her, her friend. And we're hanging out uh, after our set backstage. Uh, it was an outdoor venue. We're sitting at a picnic table. And her friend is like, I don't understand what the big deal is with these, this kiss band. And I'm like, what's the big deal? They just wear makeup. And it's like, no sooner did she get done saying that. And this door opens and Gene Simmons walks out and she was, I've never seen, it was like, it was like a sitcom. She yeah. was literally going, uh, uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> it was the best. I was like, now you understand. Yeah. Now you understand my yeah. my i have to share my greatest lining up to meet kiss moment it was uh i was in the line with bruce springsteen and tom morella oh my god yep so wow morella was playing in springsteen's band wow and he played wow. the night before kiss did and so we're standing there and 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 you were managed by doc you understand this completely yeah. he's unaffected by anyone and anything yeah yeah and yeah. he's walking with bruce he's like no no just get in the line just get in the line yep 
And that, I watched, that says a lot. Yeah. Yep. I watched Bruce Springsteen become an almost 15 year old kid when he realized he was about to take a photo with Kiss. Like, it's a crazy. It's he was crazy. standing there like, I'm, I'm Bruce Springsteen. Yep. And literally, he walked in and, and Gene was like, Bruce. And it was just, <laughs> that was it. Photo got taken, Bruce went off. Amazing. Yeah, it doesn't matter who you are. You're getting, you're going through that line quick because I've gone through that line a few times and been fortunate enough to just kind of like be put in there. But yeah, you're going through what? quick. Even even when the, we got the band photo, uh, the most yeah. we've had a few band photos with them, but the most recent one, it was just the same thing. It's like, okay, quick, one, two, three, boom. Okay, guys, thanks. You know, I, and they're I, always yeah. they're always cool about it, but. It's, it's it's you're not hanging out and making small talk i ended up with a random person in one of mine <laughs> they just pushed a spare person in and <laughs> i said great. to the guy doing the photos can you send me one without someone standing next to tommy we're photoshopping her out <laughs> <laughs> all right good. so live album this friday what has started in the way of writing music for when a singer is found because you guys aren't really on a time frame you're going to do it when you can do it yeah. Yeah. Um, after, you know, after Eric left, I mean, we just, we just took some time off, you know, I went to Japan, spent the summer over there and just, you know, it's like, I, I'm just going to, I'm just going to take a breather. We all did. And um, so uh, the cool thing about technology is, you know, we all live in different cities and here's my idea. First, it starts here. Yep. The idea starts there with my wife and son. Yeah. Um, and then uh, it goes over to this side of the room. And then from there it goes, you know, I'll just shoot it out to those guys and uh, they'll either take it or, or not. And, and vice versa, same thing. Uh, we, sharing ideas is easy and yep. painless and do it at your convenience and the whole thing. Um, you know, it's, it's not like, I've had to explain to people being creative is not something you just turn on and off. It's not flipping a switch. It's not, you know, it's, it's just, you have to bring yourself there. And when you get a group of guys together, some of them are mentally there. Some of them aren't mentally. There. This is a great way of doing it to get the stuff organized. And then when you get together, it's like, all right, let's fine tune all of this. Yeah. Did you, um, do you see you working with Nick again? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. And he's, he's, he's pumped. He's yep. pumped. Let's do this. Let's get a guy. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. When you were here and like we were sort of going through everything, trying to get I got, Eric well. I got my phone to sleep. We got a, a band thread going on. And I know, I know that once these start, they, uh, they, a lot of texts coming in. I've, so I've, yeah, I was in one on the tour. It's bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Especially if you're trying to sleep. Yeah. So Snake mentioned to me that when Nick produces, there's some kind of weird drumstick and cowbell dance moves going on. Well, first of all, it's like having your biggest fan in the room. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it it's like a Saturday Night Live skit. It's like you know, there's the band and then there's this guy, he's like got all this energy. And so you'll start playing an idea and he'll be like, yeah, you see him start to go like this. He'll get like his metal face on yep. and then like he'll start to get down to like a, he's got this guitar pose he does and he'll start playing air guitar and he's always got a drumstick in his back pocket and he'll start, start bashing drums and and this, the funny thing is, like, he, he did a Rush record. I'm trying to picture him in the room with Rush doing that. Because yeah. that's what he does. And he's, like, animated and he gets excited. And he's like, pick scratch. Whoa, go do that, you know. And uh, I try to picture him, like, doing that with Rush. Yeah. So, uh, or or anybody for that matter. It's, it's, it's fun. It adds really great energy to the session. And it's, it's just it's just really cool. And the guy loves rock and metal. He's just so into it. And uh, it makes the process fun. There's just, 
keeps it fresh and it's, it's just it's just how it should be done awesome yeah man but, yeah and and for er- everyone asking they'll find a singer when they find a singer and the album yeah. will be done when it's done yep yep let's That's leave it at that scotty we're not we're not going anywhere yeah well hopefully the one place you will come is here we certainly will and we love danny there we go yep. all right guys you heard it from scotty live album out in two days it's fucking killer it's been done so well um it's everything a live album should be thank you awesome man i'll talk to you soon yes take care of yourself brother have fun with that i'll hopefully not get killed all right (laughs) thanks man see you later Bye -bye. bye